Um, but this comes from John 9. Now, John 9 is great, but John 9 is long. And in order to get to the juicy, good parts of John 9 that I'm talking about tonight, we're going to have to read through John 9. And so, <laughs> um, like that, and, and I'm, I care about the end. And so, what we're going to do is we're going to watch it instead of read it, because I'm going to read the parts that I'm going to use, but in order for me to read the parts and make it and make sense, we're going to watch it. So, this is a clip from one of my eh, Jesus movies. Um, it's Jesus of Nazareth. It was in 1979, 76, one of the two. Um, and this Jesus movie has three parts to it, and each part is two hours long, making it a six-hour Jesus movie. And don't get me started. Um, but this is one of my favorite scenes in it, and it's Jesus healing the blind man. Um, so we'll watch that, and then I'll talk about religion. So, yeah. It does do well as a blind beggar. If he can see, no one will give him anything. Leave me alone! Don't touch me! Don't touch me, I say! Master, that man was born blind. He's accepted his health and made his way, then change it. He lives in darkness. So as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. No! Don't leave my eyes alone! I don't want you to touch them! No, don't touch my eyes! No! no. Ah. You are hurting me! They're burning! What have you done to them? What have you put on them? Uh, Go and wash his eyes. Come on, let's think of the Come on! Wait, wait, wait! Oh! 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 Oh!
Do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, Master? That I may believe in him. You're seeing him. It is he that is speaking to you. sidewalk um, with some of my neighborhood friends, but for the sake of the story, they weren't there. Um, and I remember one particular day, my dad was outside. All right, so I told my dad, um, my dad was outside, he was doing yard work because we had hedges that sucked. Our hedges were terrible. And so he was fighting the hedges, and I was riding my bike up and down the sidewalk. And I remember that um, our sidewalks were crappy because it's New Jersey and everything is trash. So the sidewalks were like zigzags, and so my wheel hit one of the zigs, and I went flying. He went back. Yeah, I went back. <laughs> and I like flipped over in the air, and I landed, and I'm sitting here crying, and I didn't call for my dad. Weirdly enough, I didn't call for my dad. But um, all I saw was him running and pushing things out of the way, and. He yeah. came to me and he, he swooped me up and uh, I was little then. Hard to believe, I know I'm so tall. And um, so it was just like, he just grabbed me and then he took my bike and then he threw my bike in the driveway and he laid me ever so gently on the couch and he put on Jimmy Neutron and, uh, or was it fairly our parents, one of the two. And um, he addressed my wounds and I think he uh, stayed inside with me for the rest of the day um, and made like, Spaghettios and stuff, but um, yeah, and like I think that that's a really good image to remember that we've always needed rescuing, wow. and so when we look at this story, um, it says in John nine one, as he went along, he saw a man blind from birth, right. and and what I think is so fascinating about this verse is that it yeah. says he saw a man wow. blind from birth, and my dad saw me. And the reason why my dad saved me was because I was his. Wow. The reason yeah. why Jesus saved. saved this man was because this man was a child of God, just like right. anybody else in that temple. And yeah. so Jesus saw this man, but the next verse says, his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Mm. So Rabbi, who messed up? Who right. was the one we can blame for this man's situation? Right. Now where Jesus saw... They wanted to blame. Wow. And they were wanting to blame because of the fact that they were under a religious system where um, if things don't go your way, yeah. if things don't go the way that you want them to, yeah. then that means that God isn't on your side. And so yeah. you can write down my first point, religion blames. Religion blames. Wow. Rabbi, who sinned that this man was born blind? Mm. 
who do we blame for the situations that we are in? And one thing that, um, that, one thing that I always try to remember about um, this time is that preachers were saying that if you were diseased, if you were poor, if you couldn't afford nice things, if you were, um, in some cases, a woman, not always, if you were a child, then you could not come to God. You were excluded from a religious experience, and they created boundaries in which people could not approach God. Yeah. And so, I don't want to tell you a parable. <laughs> um, and I'm going to be like Jesus and set up my metaphorical boat. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a parable. So, there is a, see, I walk on water, the Last Supper, and I'm on a ship. <laughs> um, so there was a man, there was a black man, and he was walking down the road, and um, he was passing by this very, very nice church. It was like a small town, they had a really big church, and he, as he was passing by, it just happened to be choir practice day, and he heard this beautiful choir music coming from the church, and he almost floats up the hill where the, the church is um, into the back row to listen to this choir music. And this church is so beautiful. They have stained glass with um, all of these colors streaming in and all of the celestial music is mixing together to make this otherworldly experience that he couldn't get anywhere else. And he's really, he's crying and he's experiencing God. But one of the parishioners comes up, this older white man, and he taps him on the shoulder and he says, son, we don't want your kind around here. You're going to have to leave. And so this man is heartbroken, but he leaves, and he, and he walks down this hill, and he sits on a stoop at the bottom of the hill of this church, and he's crying, and he's so confused, and then he looks up, because he feels someone sit next to him, right. and he looks over, and it's Jesus. And Jesus is sitting next to this man, and, and, and the man is, isn't in awe, he's just mad. He's like... Why did you bring me in there and make me such a fool? Like, for, like I don't belong in there. Why, why did you make me feel like so embarrassed about you know, experiencing you know, who you are? And Jesus almost laughs at the man. He starts chuckling and he starts laughing at the guy. Yeah. And the man is so confused. Like, Jesus, why are you laughing at me? And I think Jesus' answer is, is the diagnosis for the problem of a lot of churches and a lot of religion today. Jesus said to this man, he said, it's okay, son. They don't even let me in there. Wow. They don't even let me in there. Wow. And I think a lot of times, when we try to make scapegoats, we strangle God's plan. Wow. Religion makes um, uh, scapegoats that strangle God's plan. Wow. I, I hate, I hate, I hate hearing when, when churches are like, don't let the gay people come. Don't let the, the black people come. Don't let the, don't yeah. let the, um, the sick people come. Don't right. let the disabled come. We don't right. want to build a ramp because that's too much money. We don't wow. want to outreach to this bad neighborhood. We want to close ourselves, close doors, do all of this wow. stuff, put up walls, put up red tape. We want to make um, lists of curse words you're not supposed to say, tattoos you're not supposed to get, clothes wow. you're not supposed to wear. Wow. And we make God's plan, God's effectiveness, so minimal to where, what are we doing? It's just the same me in a church full of other me's praising a God, but we're scared to go out and do something about it. Wow. And I remember when I was in a service, and I remember healing, uh, oh, I remember hearing, actually it was, it was this past Sunday, when uh, Pastor Stephen was like, um, Jesus saw the people, I tell you I love this story so much, Jesus saw people being wronged in the temple because they didn't have enough money yeah. to participate in worship, and so what did Jesus do? He didn't pray about it. He didn't make right. up walls. He right. didn't cut all of those people out. What did he do? He ripped out the ATM machine, and he threw it across the room because people were being distracted. There was a wall that was being made between right. them and God. Right. And, and so... One thing about religion is that it will always find somebody to blame. There's, there's always somebody that needs to blame. We see it in the Holocaust. There's, there's someone that needs to be blamed. We see it in the civil rights movement. There's someone that is at fault. We see it today wow. Wow. with Westboro Baptist Church and all of these other people on the side of the road saying God hates fags and God hates um, abortion. And God, I, mean, I mean, 
There are things in the Bible that you're not supposed to do, yeah. but God wants his everlasting arms to reach as far as they possibly can. He doesn't want his, his arms cut off right. because of your uncomfortability. Wow. And so yeah. the next thing that religion does is religion blinds, which wow. is very ironic because this story is all about a blind man being healed. Yeah. And usually when this story is being taught, actually, um, not yet. Usually, <laughs> after this, while the story is being taught, we usually see the blind man as a metaphor for people who don't know God. Right. But I would submit to you that the blind man is a metaphor for people who truly have experienced God yeah. in a way that all of us claim to have. Right. And so, in John 9, 39, this is why we skipped, this is why we watched the video so we could skip to the end. Um, <laughs> It says, Jesus said, for judgment I have come into this world so that the blind will see and those who see will become blind. Mm -hmm. And some of the Pharisees who were with him, you even saw it in the video, heard him say this. And he asked, what? Are we blind too? And I think this is Jesus' answer always gets overlooked. Because when I learned this in Sunday school, I always learned the version where the man gets healed and that's it. Yeah. And Jesus just goes off and he dies for my little sins on a safe cross and he doesn't, yeah. you know, say too many offensive things and then he just rises again and I can just right. go living on my life and doing whatever the heck I want to do because right. he died on the cross for my safe sins. No, Jesus says, if you were blind, you would not be guilty of your sin. Mm -hmm. But now that you claim you can see, your guilt remains. If you were wow. blind... If you understand your limitations, if you understand that you need a God to lead you around and to, and to show you what you're missing, yeah. then you would not be guilty of your sin because wow. you understand your limitations. But now that you claim you can see, your guilt remains. And so understanding your place right. is key. Yeah. These Pharisees were so bent on rules and regulations to the point where they were putting that in place of God. Wow. What I think is so interesting is, is that when you put rules and regulations in, in place of God, but yet you claim to serve God, then you're being a hypocrite. And Jesus yeah. calls them hypocrites many times because once you put in a system, once you use um, a verse here and a verse there to, to cite and to help your, your cause, then what have, you, what have you done? You've just replaced God. You don't need him anymore. Yeah. And the people who claim to be closest to God knew not of him. Mm -hmm. and, and understanding your place, I think, is key, is, is humbling, is, is, is something that we always need to remember, is to be humbled in God's sight. Yeah, and so the next thing, and the last thing you can write down, because I preach fast, <laughs> um, is religion bewilders. Right. Religion bewilders. They're all bees this, this week. <laughs> hey, welcome to the show. <laughs> and so the scene after that, um, if I had kept it in there, um, I might put it in another sermon about it, because it was, it's like my favorite scene, or we can watch it after. But um, <laughs> it's like, it's, it's literally Jesus starts yelling at these people for just not getting it. They right. built up all of these walls. Their hearts are so hard and unreachable that he starts yelling at them. And John doesn't give us that because John's whole idea is that I'm telling you new stories about Jesus. But Matthew right. gives us that. Right. And so Matthew says, Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, The teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. They sit in the seat of receiving, of receiving from God. And Moses is famous for receiving the law's Right. from God. And so yeah. the Jewish people would have definitely understood that they are in a seat of authority. Right. But Jesus puts a clause to it. He says, so you must be careful to do everything they tell you. So listen to their authority. Mm -hmm. it's, it's okay to listen to their authority. Mm -hmm. But do not do what they do because wow. they do not practice what they preach. Wow. They tie up heavy, cumbersome loads and put them on people's shoulders, but they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. Wow. Jesus is saying that, you know, they preach great sermons and they're, yeah. they're very in, insightful as yeah. to what God wants of you to do, yeah. but they don't do it. Wow. They don't do it. And so it kills me when, you know, you hear people, you know, especially new Christians asking, how can I be a Christian? 
how can I how can I do you know you know what God wants me to do you know because if I'm supposed to be changed then what am I supposed to do differently and what I would submit to you is what Jesus said and Jesus said just be a person mm. just be a person and I think that there's always self-improvement that we need to do right don't get me wrong we are sinful beings in need of a savior yeah. we are blind and we need a guide but there's also the part of it where there are things that God has instilled in you that you shouldn't try so hard to work against because you're working against the purpose that God has for your life. Mm -hmm. And so basically Jesus is saying through this that religion is, is not what I came to do. Mm -hmm. I didn't come to make a new brand of Pharisee or a new brand of heretic or, or protester. Yeah. I came so that way you can be my arms and so that way wow. you can be, in your own special way, an image of me. That's so good. Jesus is the image of the invisible God. Wow. And what the image of the invisible God is, is love. Is yeah. nothing but love yeah. and is nothing but um, um, just open arms. That's great. And so what I would advise you to do is to understand your blindness, understand your limitations, right. and always remember that, that first time when you felt God and you felt that difference, mm. that, that, that need that you didn't know you had, and then when you see others, you see others with that need, and that yeah. helps you to love them a lot better That's than so you good. have before. Amen. Amen. Amen.